Good evening. Welcome to the New York Studio School's virtual evening lecture series. Uh, tonight, we are very pleased to be presenting Brinda Kumar, Gerhard Richter, Painting After All. Um, I would like to thank everyone out there uh, for joining us tonight. I would like to thank Brinda for sharing this monumental exhibition. And I say that because like last night, this lecture was planned for the spring. Um, and uh, we, it had to be postponed because of the pandemic. And um, it's a really special opportunity to revisit this huge retrospective um, because the show was actually only open for nine days, um, which I think could be a record according to Brenda. Um, so it's, very, it's a very special opportunity for us and the school, this New York Studio School is very um, happy that we can bring it to you tonight. Um, I would like to just quickly mention that um, our, if you follow our series, we're gonna pick up on November 10th um, <clears throat> after the presidential election. And at, next week is the studio school's virtual benefit. Um, that is on Thursday night. If um, that's free and open to everybody, it's gonna be on Zoom as well. So um, if you're enjoying the series, please join us for that. Uh, you can find out more information on our website. Um, I would also like to thank um, the generous support provided in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council, the Robert Lehman Foundation, and many individual contributors. Please do consider making a donation during or after tonight's talk by clicking on the support button on our homepage at www.nyss.org and then just click the donate button. Um, it's a difficult time for small ins art institutions like ours and any co contribution is greatly appreciated. It allows us to bring this content to everyone. Um, and before I introduce Ms. Kumar, um, I would also just like to point out that at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q and A button. Um, you can uh, put in a comment or a question anytime during tonight's talk um, and we'll come back at the end and, uh, and field those questions. Um, and if you're on YouTube, you can just uh, enter those in the comments section. All right. Um, so, um, Brinda Kumar is an assistant curator in the Department of Modern and Contemporary Art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art here in New York City. She completed her BFA in painting and printmaking from the College of Art in New Delhi and her MA at the School of Arts and Aesthetics at JNU in New Delhi. Uh, she received an MA and a PhD from Cornell Uni University. Um, Brenda joined the, the Met in 2015, and she's worked on several exhibitions at the Met Royer, including Nasri Mohammadi in 2016, Unfinished, Thoughts Left Visible, Like Life, Sculpture, Color, and the Body from 1300 to Now, and Home is a Foreign Place, Recent Acquisitions in Context um, that was up last year. Earlier this year, and the reason that we are here tonight, she was co-curator of the exhibition Gerhard Richter, Painting After All at the Met Breuer. Uh, that exhibition was scheduled to be on view from March 4th to July 5th um, but of 2020, but had to close prematurely to, due to the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, most recently, she co-curated the installation of Gerhard Richter, the Birkenau paintings, uh, which is on view in the, uh, right now, the Robert Lehman Wing at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and that is up until January of next year, so I encourage you to go see it. Um, and with that, please join me in a virtual welcome of Brenda Kumar. Thank you, Sam, and um, thank you to the New York Studio School for the invitation um, to speak about this, uh, this exhibition that I worked on. And thank you all for joining us this evening here in New York, and I hope you're all well in these unprecedented times. So as with all things in this um, strange time that we're living in, in this COVID era, um, we, I am hoping this evening to transport you virtually 
to this exhibition that, as Sam mentioned, was on view for all too brief a period of time. Um, this is the lobby of the Met Breuer, which is um, uh, the space of, that the Metropolitan Museum of Art was programming in um, from 2016 till earlier on um, this year in July. And um, so it is, this is the lobby, and as you can see, uh, the, the opening screen where it says on the bottom right, through July 5th. Little did we know at the time that the exhibition opened to the public on the 4th of March, and as we all know, within a short period of time, um, the world changed. But as, as, um, as much as we can, let's, let's go back in time and to a different space. This is the Met Breuer. For those of you who are not familiar, this um, bespoke building was, um, um, was created by the architect Marcel Breuer as the home of the Whitney Museum of American Art. And in um, 2016, the Met Metropolitan Museum of Art started programming in this space in a series of special exhibitions that um, situated modern and contemporary art practice within the context of the long history of um, uh, historic collections of the Met, um, including thematic shows, as well as deep dives into um, artists' careers. And um, some of you may have um, already at, uh, be, be aware of, and certainly I know um, some of these um, exhibitions have been presented uh, through this lecture series in the past. And, um, and so the Gerhard Richter exhibition was meant to be the culminating exhibition in this, um, in this amazing and um, building with a lot of character for those of you who've, who visited it. It um, was an exhibition long, made for many years in the making as, as, as such projects tend to be. It was um, curated, co-curated by um, Sheena Wagstaff, who's the Leonard Day Lauder Chairman of Modern Contemporary Art at the Met. Benjamin Buchlow, who is an uh, Andrew Mellon Professor of Art History at Harvard University, and a longtime interlocutor and, um, and friend of, um, of the artists. And I had the pleasure of joining um, these, um, these two curators in, um, in working on this project um, for perhaps now, I was telling Sam just prior, a better part of four years now, or closer to five maybe even. And, um, and for me personally, I had, um, as, um, as, my, as my biography notes, I trained initially as a painter and printmaker, and that was, it was in art school that I first became familiar with Richter's practice. And um, little did I know one day I would have the opportunity to return to it in, um, as, as a curator. In fact, ever since I first encountered his work, um, no matter where I've been in the world, or, and indeed, no matter which laptop or, or a computer I've had, I've always had, funnily enough, uh, a Richter painting as my desktop background. So it was very, very meaningful for me to um, spend the time thinking about and uh, thinking about his practice very, very deeply. So he probably needs no introduction um, to, to this audience, but uh, Gerhard Richter is, you know, arguably one of, one of the greatest um, painters living today. He was born in Germany in 1932 in Dresden, and uh, which became part of East Germany um, following um, the Second World War. And he was initially trained in the socialist realist idiom in the East, and, uh, but in 1961 um, decided to uh, move to the West. Escape, he, he describes it as escape to the West and, um, and, 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 and considers his practice thereafter to be a new start, a new beginning. And, um, and, and what follows is six decades of um, an incredibly prolific career, thousands of of paintings and um, not to mention works in works in other media and 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 of course it's um, it's it's an it's a mode of, of of artistic practice that is ever changing and evolving and and um, with huge variety. I mean, even even in these uh, few um, images that you see, you see how radically different his he, he even his his simple approach to the canvas is. So it was important to really, you know, there's, there's much to learn from um, an investigation into his career. And um, one of the, one of the um, considerations in, the, in choosing to um, revisit his important work and practice was that the last time um, there was a major retrospective of um, uh, Richter's career was the 2002 MoMA retrospective. 
And it was close to two decades that had passed since that last big show, that last major show. And those had been very, two very, very prolific decades in Richter's career. He's continued to kind of push his practice. In some ways, there's a certain restlessness in, in, his, in his approach um, uh, to, to, to artistic production. And, um, and, and so the, the exhibition as, um, as it was conceived, very much centered this um, moment. It, was, it's not, it wasn't a traditional retrospective per se, but rather took account of his entire career, but with a very specific take through it by centering two important recent series. These are the Cage series made in 2006, and these formed both the kind of conceptual and um, uh, kind of a, a physical uh, heart of the exhibition. So imagine, if you will, um, the, the two floors. This exhibition was uh, installed on two floors at the Met Royal, the fourth floor and the third floor. And so you have, you have these, these parallel levels on, on which these two series, the Cage series from 2006 and the Birkenau series from 2014, sit at the heart of those levels, quite, quite literally one above the other. And around them are a suite of galleries that are circling them. And these aren't galleries that are up in a strictly chronological fashion, that unfold in a strictly chronological fashion, but rather thematic. And they move back and forth across his, his career. And, um, you know, very much kind of think about what are the kinds of moments of continuity and rupture in his own practice? And he's, he's an artist who's constantly kind of thinking back to his own career, not just back to his own practice, also the history of painting as we'll, um, we'll consider um, in, in this show. So these two, these two series, as I said, were, were very much the starting point. They, they are two great abstract series, um, and, but, but nevertheless, in the manner in which he arrives at the, this, the, these abstractions are, 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 are importantly different. Um, the Birkenau series is, um, is these, these, these core, he arrives at it very much by considering his long engagement with photography and uh, its mediation of memory is, and history. And um, the Cage series is, um, is more about his arrival at abstraction through this investment in chance principles. And um, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So um, we won't have time um, to, to go through the, um, through the exhibition in gallery by gallery, but I will just to give you a sense, since I, I'm, I'm aware that not many in the audience may have had a chance to, to actually visit this space. And I think it's so important to, um, uh, to kind of have a sense of how these paintings and works stood in relationship to one another, and indeed to um, the very particular spaces of the Broya building, as you can see with its iconic um, uh, gridded ceiling and those um, uh, trapezoidal windows um, that, uh, that Breuer designed for this, um, for this space. So we start um, with a kind of a gallery thinking about his, his, his earliest works, some of, some of his earliest works from the 1960s. Moving on um, to a, uh, a gallery that explores um, his interest in landscapes and um, cityscapes, and again, this, they're, they're always mediated by his interest in photography. Um, and um, uh, there's a, there was another gallery that we conceived around um, his interest in the genre of portraiture, but not in a kind of a traditional sense, but rather these serial investigations into particular kinds of artistic collaborations here, for instance, with his second wife, Isa Genskin, but also with the artists Gilbert and George, and also these kinds of um, uh, rather personal um, uh, portraits, um, both self-portraits, but also of his, um, uh, of his first daughter, Betty, as well. In this gallery um, called Chromatic Abstraction, we um, kind of have a have a snapshot of just the range and and variety of of um, Richter's uh, approach to non-objective um, um, modes of of, uh, of painting and certainly image making rather because they're not all strictly paintings. The way he kind of refers back to his his own work in um, in important ways and. Um, 
and, and also the kind of iterative aspects um, to his practice um, that, that emerge both through digital but also um, uh, photographic and, and, and um, other, other reproductive means as well. So this kind of tacking back and forth. So this kind of, these are the kind of galleries that, that, you, that you first encounter. Um, these, these would in some ways surround the group of cage paintings um, that, that, that form the one, one half on the, on the fourth floor. Then, then moving down to the to the next level, we kind of like pick up the thread of that early moment of his interest in in the greys again from 1960s. This idea of the um, the both the conceptual neutrality of of grey and the fact that grey is neither black nor white. So that kind of interest in um, the kind of photographic um, um, uh, notion again translating pho photography into into paint um, and um, and again thinking about um, uh, you know on in, in, in these referring to both um, the idea of um, the found image, but also the kind of um, uh, how, how meaning shifts in, in these kind of reproductive um, modes and, and through, through newspaper reproduction, how it, how it accrues and loses meaning, that kind of productive tension between, between the two. Um, and then moving on to a gallery uh, that brings together um, works that that really consider these 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 aspects of of Richter's career, which is which are often um, pitched as as um, um, as oppositional, um, but rather but but are in fact you know when he, when he, he for, for for the artist himself they are mu much less so. Uh, figuration and abstraction are not this kind of push and pull, but rather part of a continuum about what are the kinds of possibilities of of painting um, uh, that 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 he is he is ultimately deeply deeply invested in. Um, and then moving on, uh, we had a chance to bring together yet, yet another great series slightly earlier from um, 2004 and, and, um, uh, called uh, the, the Wald or the Forest series, which in, in important ways um, prefigures uh, the, the Birkenau series itself. So again, this, this, um, it, was, it was an opportunity to kind of like bring together a suite of paintings and have, a, have an immersive experience um, in them as, as, as well. And then finally, bringing it right up till some of his most recent um, paintings at the time that this exhibition was being uh, planned. So right up till 2017, if memory serves, um, some of these, these paintings where you, you, you look at, um, you, you have both his um, continued investment in, um, uh, in um, uh, the, this approach to the canvas with the squeegee uh, that he, he, he's been working with in since the 1980s, um, but also on the left um, through an image like strip this kind of interest in um, in uh, digital digital technologies and the kind of like really um, moving away from the from the painter's hand that he's he's kind of always skeptical in. So with that, I will take us right back to imagine if you're you're in the in the building and you emerge from the elevator. This is what you're confronted with: no no title wall or anything, just three works that in some ways set in motion some of the ideas that run through the exhibition uh, have find find particular purchase in um, Cage and, and, and Birkenau, but, are, but, but kind of are, uh, are can also be found in um, many of the thematic galleries that I've, I've, I've just quickly run you through. And um, there's certainly more information on those on, on our website as, as well. Um, so here you have three works that set, set, set the exhibition in motion, you have Tisch or Table on the left, um, which was which which Richter notes as his catalogue raisonné number one, or the first mature work that he he considers um, once he moved to the West. Um, you have um, four, uh, 11 panes uh, from a glass work from, um, uh, from, 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 the, from the 2000s. And it's, it's in, this, in this moment, you, you automatically have, you, you would, but for the kind of Photoshop wizardry of, of our installation photographer over here, you would, of course, imagine to see yourself in reflection over there, but it's not a straightforward reflection. It is, it is disturbed by the iteration um, caused through the stacking of these clear panes, which um, in some ways create this um, uh, disrupted mirror um, per se. And this, this idea of the, um, of, of, of the instability of the image is something that Richter is, um, is deeply interested in and, and 
keeps coming back to in, uh, in different modes. And then finally, you have on the right um, a small, surprisingly small work um, that um, is called, simply called September and um, upon drawing near um, is, um, is, is, a, is, a, 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 is, is a is a painting based on the much uh, published images of um, of the twin towers at the moment of impact and and it was a it was a significant um, uh, attempt by Richter to kind of deal with um, this um, uh, universal trauma that was was um, uh, was 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 spread uh, whose, whose images were spread th throughout the world um, uh, via the news and um, and 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 yet it's the, the surface of it isn't isn't a straightforward representation of um, of of the image itself it's um, the surface of that painting itself is um, is, uh, is is dis disturbed in uh, in important ways and again prefigures this interest in in the, the photograph as, as a way of thinking about memory and and, and trauma um, more, more deeply. So, so Tish, however, really again brings together those those aspects that I, I alluded to just briefly about um, the tension that is often ascribed to Richter in um, in as, as a figuration and abstraction. It is a work that um, was uh, was based was based on a found image, as many of his early paintings were found uh, images found in, in newspapers, magazines, or um, family albums, and. Um, in this instance, it is um, it, it it was based on um, uh, an image of a table um, uh, in in the Italian design magazine Delmas that he um, that he found and, and and engaged with. And as you can see in this kind of um, preparatory um, preparatory stage um, uh, drawing, he's kind of scumbling um, the surface, and and it's a, it's a kind of a, a a moment of erasure in a certain way. Um, it's a way in which he kind of foregrounds this this. This um, um, object um, of um, you know he's, he's in this newly encountered capitalist society with this plethora of um, of objects for um, purchase and 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 uh, consumption. Uh, it's a, it's almost a kind of a rumination on the banality of these these everyday objects and um, and and the excesses of of that. At the same time, it's also um, readable as a kind of a um, rubbing and and kind of like uh, er erasure. Of of a, of a certain kind of a of a of, of a past um, um, a virtuosity of of his own. I mean, he was a, he was a highly accomplished uh, painter in the East, and and, um, and 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 in his move to the West, he's almost like uh, setting in motion a new start. Um, uh, both both in terms of what his what his artistic project can be henceforth, uh, but also kind of there's a kind of a conceit uh, potentially in this to kind of think about as a, as a tabula rasa as well a new new beginning as well. So in some in in many ways it's a very conceptually dense work that sets the stage uh, for this threshold moment where as you can see you are about to encounter some of his earliest paintings which perhaps are um, some of his best known. These were his breakthrough works um, known uh, for being for his distinguished blur. Um, the exhibition was also a great opportunity to uh, bring together um, or, or, or bring, for instance, into, into view this, this lesser known work of, of Richter's um, that, uh, but it was at the time the largest scaled work that he'd done till date in 1965 called group of people and um, and again you have this a uh, signature blur and you have this this idea of people looking in every sort of different direction and at the heart of it at the very center of the of the composition you have in some ways the kind of newspaper that is the, the illustrated newspaper importantly that is the kind of source material for the kinds of images which Richter himself is basing um, his his, uh, his his paintings on so there's this kind of constant um, interplay in between uh, between the the, the, the painting um, its meaning and the embedded image but also finally the kind of instability of um, um, of, 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 of meaning that is um, is, is kind of is, is kind of in, inserted through this this the surface that is, is deliberately blurred through the kind of drawing of the of the dry brush um, across the surface and it was it was astonishing just as an aside how many um, <laughs> stray hair you know, the kind of hair, the, the hairs from the different brushes were kind of 
embedded in the paint that you see as 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 uh, as they've been uh, uh, left uh, over the decades as well. So that was um, a, a fun thing that our conservators uh, were noting throughout um, in their in their reports. But in any event, this was. So he was looking both at these kind of found images, but also importantly, um, things like family albums. Again, this kind of everyday object that you, you know you would not think about uh, as perhaps warranting um, a, a, a monumentalization um, in uh, through paint. Um, but he, what he does is that he, you know, he he takes it complete, as you can see, with the kind of um, uh, d distinguishable white border that would have been printed for these kind of snapshots, these everyday snapshots, and and he blows them up. So there's the question of like monumentalizing them through scale, and you, so you're suddenly uh, forced to kind of focus on these compositional elements of this kind of very traditional, um, uh, you know, pyramidical structure that you have with the with the father uh, uh, figure over there, and this is actually based on. Um, uh, a painting of his first wife Emma as a paint, based on a photograph of his first of his first wife Emma as a young child um, with her siblings and parents at, at, at the seaside, and it is a painting that is just simply called Family at the Seaside. But um, in time, one understands that there is actually um, a slightly more fraught. Uh, well, a definitely more fraught um, history embedded in this um, in this project, because unbeknownst to him at the time, um, uh, Richter's uh, then father-in-law had been um, an, an infamous, uh, infamously involved in the um, uh, euthanasia program, well, forced murder of um, the, uh, the mentally ill and um, schizophrenics, including, um, uh, as it turned out, um, coincidentally, um, Richter's own aunt. So there was this kind of, he, he was dealing with this history, this kind of hidden history of, um, uh, you know, con uh, complicity in, um, in, the, uh, in the kind of horrors of Nazism in the, that, that, that his, and, and the proximity of that within his own family. He goes on to be more explicit in this by, um, uh, in, in a work such as Uncle Rudy, which is um, as, uh, based on a photograph of his um, mother's favorite brother, um, the Uncle Rudy of the title, um, here in a recognizable, immediately recognizable in his Wehrmacht uniform. And, um, as, as, and, and he kind of positions this smiling um, young man in, who's, who's going to go off to, to war and, and, and as it turns out, die very soon afterwards, be killed in that war. He's, he's acknowledging um, the the familiar proximity of this. So he's he, he's he's dealing, um, or he's attempting to deal with um, with these difficult and and very traumatic legacies of of Nazism. And is it possible to? How is it possible? And is it possible indeed? Then that 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 kind of going back and forth between those questions is 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 important to to Richter to kind of deal with these. Um, with these histories, um, and 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 that is something that is 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 in some ways another through line, and actually brings us um, to the Birkenau paintings, which are based on um, these uh, the only four known photographs um, known to be uh, taken from inside the, um, co uh, the, the 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 death camps of Auschwitz Birkenau, and these were taken by um, members of the Sonderkommando who were most Jewish prisoners who were forced to um, uh, assist in the in the murder of um, of um, inmates, and um, and these were were, were taken uh, by uh, by the by means of um, the Polish resistance uh, had smuggled in um, a film um, in order to uh, record um, these atrocities, and um, and 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 these these were were published in the 1940s and and were well known. Um, uh, in um, in you know they've been published in several contexts since the 1940s um, when they were when they were first um, when they were taken, and Richter himself had been aware of them um, in since since about the 50s um, in and um, and included them included a detail of one of them in his compendium of source images called the Atlas, um, which some of you may be familiar with. 
but he really um, re revisited them upon um, upon becoming um, familiar with the work of the French philosopher and um, art, uh, historian um, Georges Didi Huberman in an important um, study called Images in Spite of All. And it was at that moment that set, set into motion um, a, a long period of, of thinking about whether or not this was something that um, he could address um, in painting. Um, and, um, and, and, and he, the book itself dates from 2008 and, and Victor was spent several years, um, you know, thinking, thinking about it and, and investigating possibilities for doing, for working with them and ultimately chose to, um, uh, you know, approach them by projecting the works onto four, uh, 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 projecting the images onto four large canvases, and then ultimately, um, you know, drawing them in, but quickly realized over, over this process that that was not going to be a sufficient way of um, resolving and um, re resolving the images. And, um, and, and, and as you can see in the in-process images on the right of one of the paintings, he quickly veils them in this successive series of paints that are applied um, mostly with a squeegee uh, that is drawn across the canvas to create this kind of veiled surface that obscures and ultimately there is no trace left of, um, no visible trace left of the underlying photographs themselves, um, which you can see over here in their final form of the four paintings. And um, and and indeed, it was. Um, and in, in initially, he um, he called these um, uh, paintings uh, the simply abstract paintings, as as many of his paintings are called. But but subsequently, chose to actually name them. But now, after the kind of source images um, that that lie beneath, and in, in in some ways, there was a there was a kind of hesitation um, to 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 wanting to mon kind of memorialize them in fixing this um like is it is it is it too much to kind of like fix these these images in this um uh, these images of trauma in this in 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 in, in these one painting so in some ways to kind of like um uh, uh, deal with that um, with that uh, um, uh, vexed uh, question he creates duplicates of them in a manner that he's actually done is, is part part of his practice he's often created duplicates but he goes a step further to kind of like destabilize that idea that you could kind of like fix in, in and, and again uh, in uniquely fixed there's a kind of unique horror to the to the event but there is a way in which this um, the, the the horrors of that are embedded within us as as um, as as human beings it's a, in some ways to kind of project that forward to kind of see that what are the ways in which this can you can kind of destabilize the singularity of that image he creates these duplicates um, that uh, are, are further fractured um, into these quadrants and then in yet another step, you, you, they were installed in a gallery, as you can see over here, both facing one another, but then also um, having uh, this, uh, this uh, work, which is called um, uh, Four Grey Mirrors, which in some ways mirror that once again, so this kind of a way of, 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 of duplicating them yet again. So in some ways you're kind of uh, uh, staving off this idea that you would kind of like, you know, um, memorialize in a, or, or the, 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 the paintings in, a, in, a, in any kind of singular fashion or, or that they can be read in any kind of um, uh, straightforward, straightforward manner. So this kind of um, complexity and, and, and interest in iteration um, brings us to one, the, the idea of another Another signal that we have at the very outset of the exhibition. So you saw this interest in mirrors is um, is uh, is a is a through line in the exhibition. As mirrors and glass work is a is a through line in, in the exhibition. And of course, the mirror has a has a long history in uh, um, uh, it has a particular significance in the history of Western painting as a as a as a window window onto the world or as a kind of reflection back of um, of the realities of, of of societies. And of course, here you have the large 
Mars, Kiss's um, famous um, uh, example of, of, of introducing that mirror um, in, in this work. But, you know, it's something that Richter has dealt with from, from very early on. You have this here in um, the 11 panes, as I mentioned, which has this kind of iterative aspect. So there's the clarity of the, of the, of the clear glass that then ultimately functions as, a, as an unstable mirror when they're kind of stacked against one another. Um, this, uh, this goes right back to some of his earliest works. This is from 1967 called Four Panes, where you have, there's a kind of a kinetic element built into the work, which is flexible and moves. And again, speaks to um, the way, the fracturing of the image beyond the mirror, the framing of, of the image through it, um, uh, uh, through, through, the, through the window. And, um, and the kind of, as you, as you kind of walk around this, there's a shifting, shifting relationship to your environment and also how you see yourself. And, and that very much brings us um, to the most recent work in the exhibition, which was called House of Cards. Um, and, and the reason we, um, we, we placed it, um, you know, perhaps um, surprisingly in, um, in, uh, uh, in the context of his earliest works is because in some ways, this, this, this instability of the image and the fracturing and the kind of multiple refractions and reflections that you see as you circumambulate the work um, is, 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 is is arguably akin to the kind of, of um, uh, blurring or the kind of choppy brush strokes that you see in um, in some of Richter's earliest um, works that you that from from the 1960s. It is a work that um, is um, uh, uh, you know also in um, in dialogue with um, both um, uh, with, with the architecture of, of, of Breuer as you can see here on 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 the left with the window um, especially um, as, um, as as you see but also um, and and um, Hal Foster argues uh, for this in his catalog essay. Um, you have um, the kind of relationship to um, the utopian architecture, alpine architecture of Bruno Tappert, this early 20th century German um, utopian architecture, um, and, and the clarity of, of, of glass and the, the promises that that holds that Richter is possibly also kind of engaging with. I mean, he is ultimately um, a keen, keen student of, um, of history and, 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 and history painting. And perhaps no better is that seen in, um, in, 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 a, very, uh, in a very explicit manner in his um, uh, relationship with um, the, as a, you know, so this was just to kind of give you a sense of, of how, how that shifting, precisely how this, your experience of this, uh, of this work is, uh, shifts as you, as you move around it. And, um, and and actually, coincidentally, it was it was um, it, it, you 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 have um, a view of the Alps um, in the distance over there. The the work in the distance uh, that the the panoramic piece is called Alps as well. So there's there was a nice coincidence um, of um, of intent perhaps in, um, in 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 bringing those two works into juxtaposition with one another. Um, and um, um, and so so returning to what I was saying, that Richter is 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 cognizant of um, um, the, the long history of, of painting, um, not just in his references, as I mentioned, to, um, you know, the kind of role of mirrors and as, 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 as with Velazquez, but also thinking about um, the role of light and, and um, in um, uh, uh, the, the works of Vermeer, uh, has, has those comparisons have often been made, but, um, but also in the work of um, Caspar David Friedrich, um, where, where you have a work um, which was um, um, the Wreck of Hope, The Sea of Ice. And, um, and this was a work that was very um, important uh, for Richter and actually spurred him to take a similar Arctic voyage in the 1970s that um, uh, um, uh, during which he produced, uh, uh, he took a series of photographs that um, ultimately became the basis of a handful of paintings um, uh, that, and, and seascapes in particular, including um, this one called Ice. Um, but where you have um, Friedrich's work, you have kind of the, the wreckage as, uh, as, 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 you know, the, the, the main drama is there in the kind of breaking of the, of the, of the iceberg. Um, but you also have the, 
uh, the, 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 the remnants of the wreckage as some sort of indication of the presence of, of, of the human in, in, a, in, in the fine romantic tradition. Um, in, Richter's, in Richter's composition, um, there is no such, uh, such, such, such element to kind of hang on to. In fact, there is these, these flows and icebergs float into the distance. Um, you, know, you're, you have no sense of your scale and relationship to these natural elements. Um, they, they blur into the mist. There's a kind of obscure, and, uh, you, you, you know, the, the top of the iceberg obscures with the sky and dissolves into the sea. And that kind of um, instability is, is, again, kind of refers back to that, that kind of ambivalence um, that Richter is, um, is, 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 is an abiding um, element of, of, of Richter's um, thinking behind, behind some of these works. So those are quite intimate in scale, but then you have these kind of expansive seascapes as well that were, were based on photographs again um, taken from that um, um, uh, you know from 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 that same same voyage um, and um, and and you have again that that blurring between the sea and the sky and, and in, in in other compositions he's quite literally um, mirrored the sea elements to kind of create two seas where you're where you you're you're kind of disoriented um, uh, and 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 don't know where you stand in relationship um, to to these to these works as 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 well um, and in the exhibition we we paired them uh, perhaps surprisingly with um, uh, uh, very differently scaled and, and very very differently composed works um, which are on the left that you see um, here called um, s with child uh, which were again based on photographs that he took again this is a um, um, a, a practice uh, for those of you who don't know, Richter has based many of his his paintings and, and some of his of, of his seemingly abstract works too on uh, photographs that he's taken. He's got a compendium of source images called the Atlas, in which he's been um, you know collecting uh, works um, and including images, both his own photography, but also found images. And a few of those occasionally make their way into into paintings. So these. Uh, paintings that you see on the left are called um, S with Child. And um, perhaps, in, you know, this is again, he, he's looking at a very traditional genre, right? I mean, he's he's looking at the landscape and then this mother and child image. But it's it's even as he approaches these um, quote unquote traditional genres, he's, there's it, they're really um, you know that's that's less significant to him as as opposed to there an occasion to investigate the possibilities of painting, and then ultimately that is what Richter is is invested in is that no matter the subject matter. It is what is what what is it that the that the painting can 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 do? I mean, and 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 that is why, in some ways, he can't. You know, the 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 subtitle of the exhibition, even even when you're talking about his works in other media, or um, you know, or even his glass works, as as, as hopefully is has been clear, have a very important and significant relationship to his painting practices practice. And so it is for him painting after all. And this was the title that you know after after much uh, back and forth and. and and discussion ultimately it encapsulated um, uh, a lot of what we were in, in, in the pithiest way what, what we were the conversations we were having and and ultimately Richter's project itself so even these intimate um, surprising uh, you know uh, photographs become the occasion to really consider what what paint on canvas can can do and, and with radically different um, results and and that is something that Richter has never shied away from there hasn't been um, um, a kind of a consistency or a period in his work where he's working in in the same mode, uh, for example. So here you see two works, both from 1983, and 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 you know in, in as 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 the image can it shows radically different in how he's approaching um uh, how he's approaching the canvas what he's interested in and in fact i you know I, I think it is actually um very interesting to see how he very deliberately um introduces this um idea of 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 a uh, of a of, of a very different mode to precisely kind of engage with that idea of um um, you know, the, you know the, this, this idea of inconsistency, 
um, ambivalence and skepticism, the, the, that, that kind of skepticism of, 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 um, of, of vir painterly virtuosity on, on the one hand, um, but also um, a kind of a restlessness um, that you see in his, in his work that you know, wants to constantly retain the flexibility to kind of move back and forth in, 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 um, in, in, in time. And that brings us to um, the, um, the Cage series um, and 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 you know, here I'll just just quote something that he says. Speaking of that virtuosity um, that Richter clearly has, I mean, um, he he says, "quote Despite all my technical experience, I cannot ex always exactly foresee what will happen when I ap apply or remove large amounts of paint with a scraper. Surprises emerge, disappointing ones, pleasant ones, which in any case represent changes to the painting." changes that I have to process first in my mind before I can continue. And, and for this, I, you know, he's been working with, a, a, in this modus I mentioned, with a squeegee, which is the large, you know, wide shape, uh, you know, blade um, of, of different sizes, uh, often depending on the size of the canvas, that he um, loads up with, with paint, slathers it on, and then drags it across the, across the canvas, um, which effectively both occludes and, uh, and creates um, a, a surface that is, is richly textured. So it is, in some ways, um, a, a process that is necessarily leaving things to calculated chance. Um, it is chance, but it's a kind of calculated chance. And, um, and, and the series, of course, is named after in homage to um, John Cage, who was a great proponent of chance aesthetics. But in, in Richter's case, what you have is the, the, the production of these, these surfaces that have these risks and rewards embedded into them. Um, and so each of these paintings, um, which you know, may begin with similarly scaled or in a certain kind of palette, end up in nece necessarily end up in radically different places. And I'm just going, you know, again, we're, we're, we're all looking at images on a screen right now. And I just think it's so important to kind of like get into the stuff of the painting. And, and indeed, you know, I, I was talking to Sam about this just, just prior, you know, this is, this is what one, one misses that, you know, when you, when you come close to the surface and you see how, how they're scarred, how certain things emerge and recede. And, and also that kind of interplay, how that, how that, how that shifts in, in encountering them. And also, and finally, of course, the matter of scale. And that is something that you see, we, we place the cage paintings very much in dialogue with a work like 4900 Colors, which takes the idea of the removal of the artist's hand a step further by being completely digitally uh, produced. And um, these, these are works that are this kind of pixelated uh, work that is uh, related to his um, cathedral window at, uh, at the Cologne Cathedral that he made in 2007. Um, and, and he's been making these kind of color charts since the 1970s, uh, since the 1960s, in fact. And, and, and in this later, in this most, one of the more recent versions of it, he's kind of breaking it down into these squares that are five by five and, um, and that, have, that have a randomness built into them. They, have, they can exist in multiple versions, they can exist in individual Pains, but they can also exist as a huge billboard, or in this version, uh, as you can see, like these kind of five um, uh, panels. And there is no strict order to how they should be um, displayed either. It's quite literally whatever order they come out of the box and you, you put them up. So really taking that idea and pushing it, um, um, you know, a step further to kind of um, create these, these um, uh, pixelated uh, works. And again, you see that as well in, um, in um, in a work uh, such as his um, strip paintings and um, uh, you, which which itself again going back to this idea of um, uh, the self referentiality in in Richter's work and how he's constantly kind of thinking both about what is what is um, uh, the reproduction what is what does reproduction um, through photographic reproduction yield um, and um, and 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 in this in the case of the strip paintings they're based on um, this work from um, 1990 that he then kind of um, it, it, it distills into its its um, um, uh, you know through through this through this mode of digital replication 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 um, to to you know kind of whatever in, in degree you want to 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 that the the painting kind of dissolves into pure bands of 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 color that you can see over here this is this is just my powerpoint putting these two together this is 
this is not exactly how it's done, but just to give you a, a sense of, of, of how, um, you know, it's, you cannot discern the painting on the left on the, uh, in, the, in the work on the right, um, unless you know that that is what is conceptually embedded in it. And, and, and that kind of, um, uh, uh, it, you know, tacking back and forth is something um, that, that Victor is, is constantly um, invested in. So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm mindful of time now. So I'm going to leave you with um, a, a few images of um, some of where we concluded the exhibition. Um, which um, which was looking at uh, some of these most recent abstracts and and you know during this time of closure, um, so I, in in the many months that the the exhibition which had opened and then had to shutter um, prematurely, um, it was um, the the works were still hanging on the walls, um, the galleries were sadly empty, and I had um, the immense. Uh, privilege of, um, of visiting um, the galleries, the, the museum, once every two weeks to, to monitor and check in and make sure that the works were safe and secure and sound. And it was, a, it was, an, it was not the experience that I was hoping to have, which was, I was rather hoping to be in the galleries with other visitors seeing the paintings. And, and you really got to, you know, you, you encounter these works and you see something different and something new each time. And I, I find myself of having this, um, you know, extraordinary experience of, of, of um, discovering new things as, as I was uh, standing in front of these works. Um, and, and I remember one day I was just completely riveted by a certain moment in a painting. So I thought I'd, I'd kind of leave you with that sense because if, if anything, um, this, um, this experience of, of um, having to visit exhibitions virtually as, as I realize we are right now and I'm, I'm, and I'm very happy to, to be doing so with you. It also in some ways um, does remind one of uh, some of the things that one's missing in, 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 in that kind of encounter um, with, with, with the works. Um, so um, very happy to have had um, a chance to work on this. There's a book and catalog if, if um, for those of you um, who, who, who may be interested. And we did a series, you know, again, virtually of, of artists' conversations um, that are um, in, you know, again, we were, this is not the kind of programming we were hoping to have, uh, but we, we brought together different artists of different generations and, um, and the filmmaker, Karina Belts, who did a wonderful film called Gerhard Richter um, Painting that really, um, you know, for those of you who are interested in his approach to squee the, the squeegee paintings, it's a wonderful um, uh, way to kind of consider that. We had, we were streaming it on, on, online. So these were some of the strategies that we, we turned to an in our time of closure to make the exhibition available and I'm very happy to have had um, another occasion to do so this evening with you all and, and keep the memory of it alive and, um, and the experience of, of, um, of, it, um, of, of it, share the experience of it with you all. So with that, I think I will clo close.